you guys doing? Welcome back. You're looking at the front of my recently painted Alpha. So I work at Piper. I, we decided to put the logos of the brand new aircraft we're building. And I promised I would post a video on the electric equipment. On my uh, battery bank that I put in the Alpha. So, a few things. First, the information that I gave you on the website was that I did not touch the original battery configuration from the Alpha. I still have the six lead acid batteries in the front with the inverter that is untouched, has absolutely nothing interacting with what I'm going to show you. What I'm going to show you is something that I developed originally in my car, for my car. I have two cars actually that I started experimenting with and let me show you those so you understand where I'm coming from. This is number one which is a 2018 Nissan Leaf with a 40 kilowatt battery. This is number two which is a 2011 Nissan Leaf with a 24 kilowatt battery. And I also bought another car. I think it was a 2016 Nissan Leaf with a 30 kilowatt battery in really good shape the battery crash the car so I actually took the battery out and I completely stripped it apart of the rest of the stuff and I built on my own 30 kilowatt battery bank now first of all this is a lithium-ion pouch battery cell configuration this are the cells I had to add in a few more cells than what the battery originally had in the car to make things even the configuration of this is seven modules per battery block. This gives a 48 volt base battery. Each battery has its own controller, its own battery management system, its own fuse, its own high power connector, and uh, each battery is completely isolated and although it looks like it's a maze of wires everything has double the capacity on the wires the width the thickness and uh, it actually everything is shielded by fuses uh, that are half of the capacity of the batteries. For example, these batteries are capable of producing way over 200 amps an hour. I put a 100 amp fuse in there because I don't need more than 100 amps and I prefer to be on the safe side. So, these four batteries, this uh, seven batteries, I'm sorry, each one of them have four cells, two in parallel, two in series, and I put the seven of them in series, which is considered to be a 14 series bank. That coupled with a small meter, each one of them has one, which tells me exactly the condition of the battery. And each one of them is connected to two bus bars, which are down there and down there the bus bars go to a pure sine wave inverter the sine wave inverter goes out to a 50 amp outlet this is a 6 kilowatt low frequency inverter what does that mean that means that with the proper power this can give you 6000 watts consistently and for 15 seconds it can give you 18,000 watts so I can actually start all my air conditioners all at once and this will be able to take it as long as my batteries can take it and I have one two three four five six seven modules and actually I have two more modules that I'm gonna fit somewhere in here a few things. Why did I put the batteries here? Well, this bay is air conditioned and you want to have these batteries in a temperature controlled environment. Second, 
I didn't want to put them anywhere else. I wanted to be in the middle of the coach at a lower level. So they would actually not mess with the weight distribution of the coach. This whole setup is probably roughly 350 pounds or so. Also, I have a, re a remote display for the battery that normally I have inside. The remote display uses a network cable. They have one routed up through the middle of the coach that I can actually turn on and off if I need to inside of the coach. I can also access the battery through Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi if need be but the connection is not that great. This is actually good enough for what I need. This battery also has its own charger. It will charge the batteries uh, decently enough but it's not a hybrid inverter. What do you mean a hybrid inverter is? Well a hybrid inverter is the inverter that it will actually produce the power and when you feed it power it will take that power and supplement it with the batteries. This one if you plug it in to charge it will take the power that comes in and feed that in the output but it will interrupt the power coming from the batteries. You cannot do the two functions at the same time. If I would have had that it would have been great but at the time that I bought this those were still not accessible at the price range and I didn't really want that function. Primarily because what I wanted was something slightly different. I wanted to be able to feed any type of current into my battery setup. And by any type of current I mean any type of current. I want to be able to feed 110, I want to be able to feed 220, I want to be able to feed 10 amps, 15 amps, 30 amps, I want to be able to feed AC, I want to be able to feed DC. To be able to do that, I developed a different trick. What I do is I have chargers. I, I, I have them in the back of the tray right now. You cannot see them. But basically, I got four different chargers. The four chargers are 110, 15 amps each. And with those, I can plug them in separately or all together so I can add how many amps I want to use. I can use a 15 amp, I can use two 15 amps, and I can use 30 amps, I can use four 15 amps, and I can use 16 amps, or 230 on a 220 circuit, or if I need to, I also have solar with a solar controller, and I can use the solar, through the solar on the coach inverter, charge my batteries. So as you see, I can feed any type of power into my system and charge the batteries. By using an external charger, I can have the inverter producing the power that the coach is using. The inverter, the only thing it's going to be doing, unless I'm only charging, the only, work, the only job the inverter has to do is to run the batteries and to produce power. I have used the inverter several times for long periods of times while charging it and the inverter performs flawlessly not a problem. I have been able to run the ACs, no problems. I got my basement AC and a rooftop AC unit and I can feed both AC units with roughly 30 amps and the inverter can handle the ups and downs and the 30 amp will catch up and top off the batteries, no problem. TV's on and all the other little things on like every so often turning on and off the microwave, things like that, not a problem whatsoever and the inverter will run it. Here is uh, the panel I'm going to show you. I'm turning on the inverter. The inverter will show you what do I have. And as you see right now I got 57.2 volts. Uh, the battery stopped off at 58. Eight. So right now I'm at 90 percent of charge. I have it set to charge at 58.4 because I don't want to go over that. Now, uh, if I plugged it in, it would actually show that I'm charging the batteries. And if I don't plug it in, it will show that I'm producing electricity. Okay? 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go unplug my coach from the outlet and I'm going to plug it in from in the inverter. Okay, see you in a couple of minutes. Actually, seconds. Okay, so we're inside of the coach. You see by looking at the TV, uh, you can see that I have power in the coach. Oh, uh, that's my fish tank. It's a 50 inch fish tank. I uh, apologize for the mess, but I'm installing wireless cameras and I got a dehumidifier. Uh, my rooftop AC is uh, running. It's kicking in pretty good. Fridge is running. And I kick this down. 72, yeah, this is running. Uh, my rear TV is on the roof. Uh, yeah, I got a red light on it, so it's running. I got power on everything. Everything is running. I got no problems. See, the inverter is capable of running pretty much every electronic in the motorhome. I also have the control for my solar. It's right there, of course. Uh, I'm under a roof right now, my carport, so I won't get any sun. But my solar will allow me to show that to look at that on the other side keep in mind oh there you see my car uh Lincoln Town car 2000 uh it's almost new it's got 530,000 miles on it uh, that gives you an idea on how we keep things up in here but uh, nonetheless the idea is keep in mind if you try to do this that when you're looking for what type of batteries you're going to use, uh, Nissan Leaf batteries are batteries that are designed not to have a climate control or temperature control built into the batteries. Uh, that is one of the big things that Nissan has been criticized for because that deteriorates the battery rapidly compared to other batteries. I do have other batteries. I actually build my own Tesla module, which is technically not difficult to do. The only problem is that Tesla module batteries require uh, temperature management. Uh, without temperature management uh, there is a pretty big risk of fire. They are more capable but unfortunately without a proper uh, temperature management you cannot run them safely. So when you pick the type of batteries you're going to use for this type of applications I would strongly suggest that you go with either a repurposed battery from the medical field or repurposed battery from Nissan or repurposed battery from uh, GM products. Uh, those are pretty much the safest ones to use because in the case of overheating the batteries are designed to maintain uh, shape, form, and they do not catch fire primarily which is one of the things that is important to be honest with you. Uh, if you try to use some other manufacturers of batteries other than LG Chem or Nissan you start getting into the troubles of batteries, uh, cylindrical shaped batteries as used in the uh, Teslas they tie, they try sometimes they tend to catch combustion by overheating if you don't have a really good temperature management system besides that it is a really good conversion it's a really good thing to do it is not technically challenging but it is a lot of work to make it work and it is a lot of work to actually do it and make it work on the other side, I don't regret having it in the motorhome one bit because I can actually drive down the road for the entire day while still charging the batteries and I can run everything in the motorhome without running my generator. As a matter of fact, I barely need the generator while I have that. Or I can uh, boondock and I can actually run for days without having to use the generator. In any case, hope you guys enjoyed the video and feel free to shoot me any questions you may have or you can put them right underneath. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Have a good one.